the way the switch works, it's like doing the, the if, right? So I switch on I, and I'm like saying is I1, then do this. If I is 2, then do this, and so on. Uh, the nice thing about this, and the standard way you format, uh, format this is like this. Um, is that it just, it's easier to read than the ifs, because the ifs are kind of hard to they jump in and out. Uh, but this is really clear that, oh, for one, do this, for two, do this. Okay, so what if we have a case uh, that we don't care about? Like, like exactly default. So that's the case where when it doesn't match any of them, we use default. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter what we call cases. We call them, we call them anything. Well, the case here is the keyword. So it has to be in case. No, I mean case category. Ah, uh, yeah. So actually, this depends on the value of i. So let's let's try this because I don't think it's going to work. Uh, whoops. So we had what forty two. Cowboy. And true. As expected, that doesn't work. So what's the error we get? convert cowboy to type int, okay? So the thing with cases is everything inside these cases has to be the same type, right? In other words, these things have to match this type, the type of this. So I is an integer, so I can only have case in an integer. This is a buck. This can't happen. So the compiler might let you try to do it because it's impossible. Um, an integer can never be cowboy. Uh, now, we saw, there's actually another example of the switch which I didn't cover, but somebody ran into. So, and that's, you can leave out the value. So I can take out i here, and do it this, this way, okay? Uh, and that's another, that's very much like the if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else. Um, except now their cases will read much clearer. They'll be like all lined up really nice, right? Um, Absolutely. Uh, so now we could say uh, this: we can't compile this because you can't compare an integer to a string. But you could have a really complicated expression. Um, I, I can do whatever I want to here. You know, I can say, for example, i greater than 100. Right? And so, actually, a fairly common use for this kind of switch is: is you have your like, if it's 10 and 11 or 12, do this. If it's greater than 12, do this. And then you're not catching all the rest of the numbers, uh, which is nice and convenient. Um, uh, so, you have switches in JavaScript. What's the difference between a switch in JavaScript and one in Go? Break the, what happens after each one? Drop something about it, exactly. So, in JavaScript, um, it falls through. It falls through. So you have to put break between each case. In Go, the default is not to fall through. If you want to, you have to use the keyword <coughs> fall through. So that's another difference. Um, one other thing which I'll talk about right now, uh, which you may run into, um, is a label. And so remember, with for loops, we can break and continue. Right? I can break, uh, and that will just stop the loop. Or I can continue, and that will go back to the loop condition and go to the next one. Um, and that's useful sometimes, because I might have, you know, if i equals 0, do something, and then, uh, and then continue. And, and that makes my code easier to understand, because I don't, I, can, I don't have to have an else. I can just sort of go to the next tier and just sort of treat the rest as I want. Um, and so you often see that pattern. Mm -hmm. okay. you, you also s often see the break pattern. Wait, wait, what's happened there with the continue to something? I thought continue just moved you back to the next iteration on the loop. Yeah. So oh, so you're going to the top? Which? Oh, yeah, you're going to the top of the loop. So you're not even hitting the switch. Exactly. So I'm like skipping the rest of the loop, going here, hitting I++, and then checking the condition again. So for the I0 case, I don't even go to the switch. 
Okay. So the nice thing about that is if you have like a really exceptional case up here for a certain value, you can sort of do it and then move on to the rest of your logic and you don't have to think about, because otherwise you end up with code that's like, gets really tested. Sort of being tabbed over all the way to the And so it's nice to be able to, to sort of continue early or break early. Um, so the advanced bit of functionality here is, what if for some reason I want to break out of the loop inside of here, okay? So you can have a break inside of the switch statement, and this breaks the case. It breaks out of here, okay? But what if I want to break out of the loop, okay? Like I want this break to go all the way back up here. How do I do that? Um, break, break. No, you can't do that. Uh, so one way to do it would be to use a variable. So I could say, I can do it that way, okay? Everybody following what that's doing? Wait, so here you're trying to break out of uh, out of the algorithm. loop. Because does the switch have a break, or if the switch has a fall through? A fall through and a break. And a break. And you the way break works is inside your switch break out of the loop. Yeah, and so you could do it this way, right? But there's a shorter way to do it as well. And that's you can use a label. and you're telling it which thing to break. Um, not super common, you occasionally see that, um, but just wanted to, to show you. That's like are. only if you happen to have a switch inside of a loop or a loop inside of a loop. The dual loop thing, that happens. Um, where you have two loops. And you gotta say which one you wanna come out of. And this is fairly typical outer, break outer. Um, but I, I just wanted to show you. There's also a go to and go, I'm not even gonna cover it's still never the so It exists. This is kind of like a go-to. It's going to a label. Um, okay, you can do continue outer two. Has the same ability. Uh, huh? Sorry, question? No, no, no. Can you have a multiple statement in a, in a case? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can, you can do lots of statements. You know what I mean is like case I equal whatever or or and something else. Ah, well you could definitely use and, just the standard way. Um, I think there is support for the the extended, like uh, let's look at switching here. I never show you the, the others. Um, this expression list, yeah, you can do it this way. Uh, so, that's the, if we go back to the, the switch I, we can say case zero, one, two. So that's nice, right? So for zero, one, and two, do this. Uh, that way you don't have to do case zero, fall through, case one, fall through, case two. Uh, you can just sort of collapse it into one. Uh, well, you can do nothing. That's what we're doing here. We're just doing nothing. Um, this is perfectly valid code. Uh, you can have the default. The default's optional. You don't have to have a default if you don't want it. Um, but yeah, you can have a, sort of an empty statement list. There's just zero things, so it just does nothing. Uh, but you know, normally you would do something. Um, so this code would only print. Actually, what would this code do? Zero, one, or two. Yeah, but we skipped zero, right? Uh, well, there we go. <laughs> so it turned one or two, right? And then it would execute three through nine, and there's no case for it, so they never do anything, and so it goes back to loop, so I have to it just print one and two. And you, before that, you had break out in there or something? Yeah. Actually, I can show you that too, just so to make it clear. So for five, for the number five, it should break outer. And then let's say for case six. Theoretically, we shouldn't get here. Okay. So let's see if that's true. We didn't get here. Why 
why don't you get to six? Let me see that again. Because if you're on case number five and you just say, okay, stop going through the loop at five here, you go back up to the top. Oh, and you don't re enter it. No. No. Break isn't like continue. No, break is like continue. You continue outer? Yes. But it's and then you wouldn't hit six. Yep. So the break just stops the whole deal. So continue outer. But you don't need to continue. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's redundant. Though. It is redundant in this case. Can you, can you break Where it's not redundant is here. Now we're continuing, we're skipping some. Now we're going to skip the rest of the expression, the statements. So in this code, for five, we won't see loop, right? Well, this is going to be confusing, so let me put high in there. So one, loop one, two, loop two, three, four. We shouldn't get here six. We didn't get loop six, loop five, because we continued, we skipped it, OK? right? Because I continued outer, so it never got to line 23. It never got here because it went back to the top of the loop and checked the condition. Okay, following for for number five. Okay. Yeah, for five. Uh, this is a terrible, terrible loop. Don't write code. Okay? <laughs> Very confusing what it's doing. Uh, and it continues and breaks are they're hard to follow, right? Well, to make this code a little clearer, you should put more print statement. You are now logged in. <laughs> Not really confuse anybody looking at your code. <laughs> and actually, if you ever have this case where you, you expect nothing to happen, like this should never happen, uh, you should use pan. Uh, right, and then, because you're, you're sort of telling yourself, oh, I made a mistake if this ever happens, and you get a nice clear, you know, this shouldn't happen, and it tells you where it happened. Uh, so you can go find this above. You've made a mistake, uh, and so you're trying to fix it. How did it happen? It happened because I changed continue to break to continue, and now it won't happen. When you continue, it goes back to the beginning, doesn't it? It doesn't go down to six? That's right. So continue takes you back up to the condition, and break takes you outside the loop. So how did you get to six to keep continuing back to the beginning? Because uh, it only happens when i is five. Oh. And then i is incremented to six, and then. Okay, so that's if and switch, and we saw the other switch. Um, we saw the two cases there. There's also this one. Oh yeah, I guess I didn't cover this, so I, I'll cover this real quick. The uh, there's a nice form for if and uh, switch. So it's pretty common to like uh, a, a lot of functions in Go return two values, and the second value is like the boolean to indicate failure or success. Okay, so. Um, so we might have something like value, comma, OK, uh, some function. Um, and so the OK there is something we need to check. So you know, if not OK, uh, you know, panic, this wasn't supposed to happen, right? Or whatever we would want to do. Uh, but we want to check that value, OK? So one thing you can do is in this, the if has a special uh, form that lets you do this. Okay. So you can have two, two uh, statements here, you, or a uh, statement expression, this thing that assigns these two values, and then you can check in the second one. So read this as this is the check, right? And this part is like pulled out. Uh, the nice thing about this is the scope of these variables is this side of the So they don't, they're not outside of it, and that's a little cleaner. Um, so you'll see this kind of code uh, pretty often. Everybody follow what this is doing? Um, hopefully, fair and clear. Uh, so this like run something, get a value, and then check it, you can do it as a single if statement. But that's like a chirp, uh, what do they call it, a ternary? Yeah, Go does not have a ternary operator uh, because it's confusing. Um, so. As if bitwise operators aren't. Yeah, well, but bitwise operators sometimes have to do them, so. So it's if value is true, OK equals some function? Uh, well, let's, I'm, I'm trying to think of a, of a case uh, that would be clearer. Uh, you could actually use a value here, but you should be using an underscore. Yeah. 
Uh, we'll, we'll see this, uh, when we talk about functions, and the reason why I'm like cautious here is because we haven't talked about functions. So I don't want to like show you creating functions and you don't understand them. So I, I, we'll cover this more. I just wanted to show you that the if has this expanded form and the switch does too. So you can have the two expressions, okay? Um, but, and that's all this is saying. The switch at x equals f and then you can do cases. So it was just like range with the return the incrementer and then also the, the key and the value, right? Uh, it could return two things. <clears throat> you could have another function that returns two things. Yeah, exactly. And one of the things that returns is like a bully that says something went wrong. Right. And that's um, pretty normal. The other thing you see a lot of is it returns an error. And the error is either nil or a value. If it's nil, then there was no error. If it's a value, then there was an error, and it tells you what it was. Uh, that's super common. And we'll see that later a lot. Um, OK. So we did if, for, and switch. Any questions about those? No questions? OK. So I thought we could, uh, for, for the new material here, I thought we could start 